2024 NFL free agency gets crazier and crazier by the day. Deontay Johnson traded. Calvin Ridley on the Titans. All sorts of news is dropping, and it's a, there's a lot of impacts to our fantasy football and best ball drafts. So today, we're going to dive into some more of the fallout from the last couple of days of NFL free agency and put them to the test, put those takes to the test in a fantasy football draft. Plus, we're going to give away a free ticket to Drafters Fantasy NFL Best Ball Championship upcoming this summer. Let's do it. Hello, hello, welcome, good, happy Wednesday evening to the folks joining us live. I'm giving out a forewarning here in the intro, storming here, or a gnarly storm is coming. So if you are watching and uh, the screen goes black <clears throat> or chaos ensues, or my, I mean, it doesn't take much for my dogs to go absolutely crazy on one of these uh, shows, as you guys probably know very well by now. But if something chaotic happens, just know that... Uh, a storm is coming. The winter is coming. Uh, it's actually spring is coming. Midwest spring storms. But nonetheless, thank you for joining. We are still in the midst of NFL free agency, and it is chaos. I did not see. I did not see either of uh, the probably the most notable recent news the last couple of days. Uh, Deontay Johnson traded from the Steelers to the Carolina Panthers. What a weird trade. We'll get into that. We will get into uh, the Calvin Ridley news and uh, trickle-down effects. <clears throat> uh, we talked very briefly on the Monday show. If you did not get a chance to watch the Monday live show with myself and Rob Coakley, go check that out after this. If you hit the subscribe button, you can get notified when we have our shows. But uh, I'll talk a little smidge maybe about Austin Eckler and just some of uh, some more thoughts that I've been uh, putting together over the course of the last couple of days because free agency is this is the craziest free agency period I can recall for fantasy football. Uh, and I think it's a bunch of different things all coming into one, but we'll get into that. Uh, as always, if you've joined us before or if you have not joined us before, um, if you would like to get a question answered on one of these shows, what we will do typically is uh, on Mondays and Wednesdays, or Mondays, myself and Rob, and Wednesdays, myself, come on here, we're going to draft a fantasy football team. But the first X amount of minutes, we'll answer your questions. Anything you know specific that you guys might have questions, you can hop into our Spike Week free Discord, 100% free. There's a link in the description. Hop in there. There's a live streamed and media channel. You go to that channel. And you can post the question whenever you want. A lot of people are typically posting it, uh, you know, the day of. But you can post it whenever. Post it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't care. And uh, we will try to get to as many of those questions. We've typically been able to get to most of them on the show before we hop in the draft and even maybe during the draft. Today is a little bit of a special uh, edition of the show. Uh, the draft we are going to do in just, a, just, just shortly. We're going to hop in just shortly is going to be on Drafters Fantasy, drafters.com. If you have not signed up and played on Drafters yet, quick shill. Uh, I, I love the format. I, I really enjoyed it. I was a horrible Drafters player, uh, honestly, before last year. I think I got a lot better this past season, probably because we took it more serious here at, at Spike Week. The Spike Week fam wrecked, absolutely destroyed the drafters best ball championship in 2023. Uh, shout out to our good friends, Updog and Dorito. Finished first and second for damn near half a million dollars between the two of them on drafters. We're going to try to see if we can just take the whole top 10 this coming year. But part of us getting into that top 10, shout out to our good friends at drafters every single show on Wednesdays. In just a second, I will post the, a link to just a Google sheet in the very first row. Enter your email in that, you know, yeah, it, it, let's do this. Let's enter your name. You can put whatever, username, 
actual name and you and I can figure out um, if you win to get you your ticket. But Drafters is giving away a free ticket for every single one of our Wednesday shows to their 2024 NFL best ball championship. So that will launch, you know, basically as soon as the NFL draft is over, I can't give away all the goods, but um, it's going to be sweet. If you've enjoyed drafters before, or if you have not played before, uh, it is a really fun format where it is cumulative scoring. So if you're not a big fan of the whole week 17 thing or the chaos of advancing throughout the fantasy playoffs, you don't have to worry about that on drafters. Draft your team, score the most points, win the tournament. It's that straightforward. And the 2024 tournament is going to be awesome and big and a lot of money, a lot of money to be won. So we're lucky enough to be giving away free tickets from now over the course of the summer. So we'll do, I'll post that link here in just a second. Um, the other thing that I will also say is, uh, I think there's going to be the last I looked, let me just take a look here really quickly. I think we'll see the drafters early, uh, best ball championship right now. It closes on April 25th. So I was looking at the wrong thing. Please ignore me, but they also have a baseball MLB best ball championship up on drafters, which is not even half full and closes on March 28th. So that looks pretty good. And they just launched an NBA playoff best ball tournament on drafters, $50,000 in prizes. Pretty fun. Anyway, let's get to the NFL free agency stuff. Enough of all this other chaos really quickly. We'll run. Let's run through the chat mob. Melch winter is coming for you. Huh? Uh, Melch says, uh, wow. Wow. 18 inches of snow today and tomorrow. That's weird. It's not snowing here. It was 75 and sunny. But as it is in the Midwest, we uh, it went from absolutely beautiful, 75, sunny, perfect, not humid, nothing, to in the blink of an eye, <clears throat> gnarly, gnarly weather. Uh, GM, RGT, RGT, Al is excited. I am also excited. <clears throat> Agree with agree with Josh. Hit the thumbs up and subscribe. GM Shuby, quasi drafters for life. I love it. Uh, Melch even says drafters has his favorite UI. I do enjoy the the drafters UI. Clancy love drafters. Underdog isn't legal in my state, so this time of year drafters is my only option. Yeah, no, we love our we. I mean, we love it. We love underdog. I, I I know some people maybe don't love DraftKings. Whatever, everybody has their preferences. We love all of our provider, providers, but um, want to make sure we're giving the uh, good people uh, their drafters action because you know we, we're, there's we're getting our money in good over at Drafters. All right, really quickly, uh, I guess I need to make sure that I make this uh, not restricted, huh? All right, in the YouTube chat. I just posted a link to a Google Sheet. If you are watching, go in there. It's completely blank. Go in the first column, enter your name, and uh, you will be entered to win at the end of the draft. So we'll talk for a couple of minutes of free agency. We're going to enter a draft. When we get to the end of the draft, I'll spin the wheel, and we'll we'll see who wins the free ticket. Um, so go ahead. Whenever you get a chance, post that in there. I'll try to I'll try to periodically repost it within the chat over the course of the show. All right. Let's talk about some of these, these, the most recent NFL free agent uh, news, Calvin Ridley to the Titans. So this one, like I said, is the most recent. So it's a little fresh and I haven't probably completely gone. Uh, of course it says view only. I just changed it to uh, one second, one second, one second. Okay. Try again. Yep. Uh, Okalani says you t- uh, so just in column A there, punch that name in, whatever, whatever name you want to choose, but it needs to be one that I can actually, you know, uh, contact you by punch your name in and we'll get you your free ticket. Please let me know that it's working this time. <laughs> I see some people in there clicking around. All right, cool. So Calvin Ridley, let's talk about Calvin Ridley for a second. Going for Calvin Ridley specifically, I actually think the Calvin Ridley news, most interestingly, has more impacts on other players than it does on 
Calvin Ridley and, and my like excitement levels for Calvin Ridley. So Calvin Ridley leaves the Jacksonville Jaguars and <clears throat> ends up in Tennessee. I think it's pretty fair to say just like offense and expectation levels for each of the, those two offenses that Calvin Ridley is certainly getting a downgrade in, in situation. Um, we can split hairs probably on like specific target shares and things like that. But going from playing with Christian Kirk and Evan Ingram and Zay Jones to DeAndre Hopkins and Chig, and then, you know, the running backs, Tony Pollard and Ty J Spears. It's like from a, I haven't like run a projection or anything yet. <clears throat> it is a negligible upgrade from a volume perspective perspective at best, right? It, it, he was getting pretty strong volume on the Jaguars. Maybe it goes up a tick. It's not going to, it's not going to go up to such an extent that I, I think it matters too much. But I, I think it's fair to say that the offense is unlikely to be better in Tennessee than it was in Jacksonville. Now, the Jacksonville offense was not was not amazing, quite frankly. They, based on matchups, you know, there's a lot of talent there. A lot of talent that is kind of underwhelmed uh, for some time now, but it, it it has been a you know kind of a spiky offense, honestly, a little bit of a best ball uh, uh, sicko offense where when they had big games, they had big games, and they really underperformed a lot of the time as well. And so, I think moving to Tennessee, we should see something fairly similar for Calvin Ridley. I think being attached to Will Levis is probably going to provide a lot of variance for these, these wide receivers, DeAndre Hopkins and Calvin Ridley. I, I think I'm going to move Calvin Ridley a tick down in the rankings just based on not even that much of him. Like I said, my expectations for uh, Calvin Ridley are largely unchanged, honestly. I think it would be fair to say that we saw – what Calvin really was with the Jaguars. And now we have this kind of mystery box, if you will, that there could be a little bit of juice uh, to squeeze. Like maybe Will Levis takes a big step and then we do get a little bit more of a target share. I think that uh, it's, like I said, net neutral is what I'll call it for, for Calvin Ridley. What I really wanted to get to is, is some of the other pieces on Tennessee where Seth says, how far does this move DeAndre Hopkins down? So for me, what I will say is I think we should, if you were drafting or ranking DeAndre, here comes the storm. If you were drafting or ranking DeAndre Hopkins based upon, um, based upon like thinking he was going to be the only guy there and it was going to be like running back, uh, not a running back, but like running it back from the end of last year. I think that was probably pretty foolish. They were almost always going to, be you know adding something like Kyle Phillips and Nick Westbrook Akine and stuff we're not I don't know if you guys can hear this it's chaos in my house uh they were almost always going to be adding something right Calvin Ridley is probably a little better than what we thought it was going to be and DeAndre Hopkins is such a player a a Keenan Allen if you will where he's not going to win on like mega efficiency in a, from a fantasy perspective. He's an, he's an efficient real life NFL football player, generally speaking, but it's going to be a lot, right? But we need a bunch of 10 to 20 yard catches. We need a bunch of those, a bunch of five yard catches. We, we need volume. And of course, touchdowns for Deandre Hopkins, the more volume we siphon off, we're going to gain some form of efficiency for the offense as uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a hundred percent true. Hoosier says your dog thinks it'll be a storm of cheese. We're going to gain some form of efficiency for the Jaguars offense. I think with Calvin Ridley coming in and I don't know about Tony Pollard, but Ridley is a big upgrade to their wide receiver two or however you view that. <clears throat> and so thinking it through, I, I am not going to move Deandre Hopkins down much. I think both of these guys get a tiny little dent in them, just tiny. 
but not too, too much. It's mostly neutral for them because I think our expectations should have been these kind that like whether it was in Jacksonville or here in Tennessee, the situation is about the same as what our expectations should have been. The big thing for me, the, the two biggest things for me, one, I think the downgrade from Calvin Ridley to Gabe Davis for the Jacksonville Jaguars is pretty real. And I'm, I'm a little less bullish on Trevor Lawrence. Um, that is, I'm going to be picky with those kind of mid tier, mid tier, um, quarterbacks, right? There's a lot of them to like, and I don't want to just go crazy based on the name of Trevor Lawrence. So I'm going to ding Trevor Lawrence a little bit because of the downgrade to, to, to Gabe. Um, I will be open to, because of exactly this should says, you know, we don't know what's going on with Zay Jones. He could be cut if they, you know, we come back and they have uh, one of the, you know, uh, one of these awesome first round wide receivers and be willing. I'm, I'm going to be willing to move back and forth, right? Move this opinion around based on new, new information. I do think it very much solidifies Gabe, you know, as if we need this, you know, something to solidify Gabe with the money that they gave him. I think it solidifies uh, Gabe's, um, you know, role for sure uh, as a downfield flyer. I think it's a small downgrade for Gabe Davis uh, going from Buffalo to Jacksonville, but the Calvin Ridley thing certainly helps. Um, Christian Kirk going to get a little minor boost from me. Again, same thing. We'll see what happens with the rookie with the draft with rookie wide receivers. Uh, Evan Ingram going to get a small little boost from me. And the big winner, the biggest winner to me of all, Will Levis. Uh, if if I were drafting right now, a yeah, make sure you enter just quickly. Sorry. Make sure, as quasi said, there's uh, just if you have to scroll down, scroll down. It's totally fine. Just make sure you're in a clean cell in the spreadsheet. Will Levis, I think, now becomes the late round quarterback du jour of of this I'm reposting the uh, video. I think Will Levis becomes like the go-to late round quarterback. Now, like this is a substantial upgrade for Levis, who is a gunslinger type. We don't know exactly how good he is as a real life football player. He might not be very good, but from a fantasy perspective, we don't care that much exactly how good he is in real life. We need him to hold the job. We need him to not totally stink. But what we really need is him to have some some players around him that can make some plays, and him to do the things play have a play style right. This is the this is the the Sam Howell and such. We have the play style that allows us to accumulate fantasy points. Take use that freaking howitzer of an arm, sling the ball down the field, and run right. Get getting out from the the old old school Titans. Mike Vrabel led Titans into a new regime can be really good for him. I, I'm not saying Tony Pollard is is helpful. Like from, going from Derrick Henry to Tony Pollard is whatever, but I do think it, it kind of having Pollard and Ty J Spears as the two running backs with those two wide receivers on the outside kind of signals a little bit of a change in how the Titans are going to be playing this upcoming year. And so that was like the big, big, big thing that I am. I'm like excited about out of this trade. Like I said, kind of net net neutral, but I've also been looking like, I kind of liked Will Levis before. Um, I didn't love Deandre Hopkins. I didn't really like Chig that much. This does give you a nice other stacking piece to go with Will Levis. I think. All right. As we continue to talk here, I am going to hop into this drafters draft. So, we're hopping into the drafters early NFL best ball championship. Looks like it is four out of 12. So we need eight. We need eight. I can share just to, just to get that rolling. Um, so that's pretty much the, the Calvin. That's the biggest new news that we've gotten over free agency. It was for sure. Uh, Calvin Ridley. Looks like we're feeling pretty quick here. About about four more. And then, like I said, we will hand out this ticket. Make sure you get your name in that spreadsheet if you want to be entered into the free ticket giveaway. And when we get to the end of the draft, we'll spin the wheel and give away that ticket. So we got Deontay Johnson 
also traded to the Carolina Panthers, which I thought was pretty interesting. And that one, not as not, I, I don't know that the Calvin Ridley one is fun, but that one is very much so not very fun. The the Deontay Johnson moving from the Arthur from the, the Steelers, which were gross anyway, and and going to the Bryce Young Carolina Panthers to put like Bryce Young, Deontay Johnson, Adam Thielen. That is just woof. Um I I let's talk about Deontay first. It's realistically, it's kind of a neutral move. When you th- like when when we really think about it and we get down to it, uh, it's real really kind of a a neutral move for Deontay Johnson. He went from a a pretty heavy target share in Pittsburgh, but a mega low ceiling offense. It's a lot of short stuff, which is really what he does, uh, and probably will still do. But the the ceiling was just unfortunately capped with Kenny Pickett, Nathan Rudolph, Mitch Trubisky whoever, even now with Russell Wilson, the ceiling was pretty darn capped. Even if Arthur Smith came in and really worked some magic, what were we really going to get out of uh, Deontay Johnson? Looks like we need just one more for the draft. So that's nice. Once we get through Deontay, I want to hit a couple questions that are in the disc and we just filled goodness. I filled quickly. Um, I think the biggest change for me, similar to the Calvin Ridley thing with Deontay Johnson, is just the fact that we now, I think, say whatever we want about the Steelers, say whatever we want about um, Arthur Smith. There, if you again, if you are in that Discord where there is that link in the uh, Hoosier. Uh, says I missed it. What's the pin spreadsheet for? Be giving away a ticket. So you're if you're watching this live, you see drafters on your screen. Drafters has their main uh, tournament over the summer. It's called the Best Ball Championship. We are drafting in the early Best Ball Championship, but the Drafters Best Ball Championship over the summer, their main tournament, their Best Ball Mania or whatever you want to call it. Uh, we're giving away tickets every Wednesday to that tournament. So. Hop in that spreadsheet, put your username, name. You know, I don't want to dox anybody. I'm not trying to steal your identity. So put whatever name you, you can put Hoosier in there for all I care. Uh, and then make sure you, you know, we will work through getting you that ticket. Shout out to our good friends at Drafters. Pretty awesome to be able to give away these tickets uh, on these shows every single Wednesday, every Wednesday moving forward. Uh, so Deontay goes from Pittsburgh to, to Carolina where I, part of me, I think I was going to talk about Pickens first, but let's finish up on Deontay. Part of me in Carolina, <clears throat> like I, I've been known, uh, Bernie B. Kurt in the, in the chat, we do our, uh, sicko surveys. We call them every week as a part of the uh, NFL best ball almanac. And, I think we did one maybe three weeks ago or so where there was a question about Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers. And my, my stance was basically, Nope, nothing can happen. Never not going to draft them. Bryce stinks. I'm out. And that's still my general stance, but I think also part of me is going to sort of think through this situation as with as, as much of an open mind as I can heading into the summer. I'm not going to be drafted. Like I'm not, I'm not Deontay and, and uh, uh, Bryce Young and Adam Thielen. Like I'm not drafting those guys on this, in this, these early contests, but I'm going to keep somewhat of an o- open mind because Bryce Young was the first overall pick. He was th- obviously not this bad at, at Alabama. And he did have legitimately the most pathetic group of skill players I think I've ever seen a team assemble before Deontay for, for all of his flaws is a pretty solid real life NFL player, NFL wide receiver. Solid is what I would call it. Adam Thielen still clearly had like a little bit of something left in the tank as a role player. We just start tacking on more players around him. And we brought in Dave Canales to be, 
the offensive coordinator. He has uh, been a whisperer of quarterbacks and offenses, uh, particularly most notably last season in Tampa Bay, reviving the career of Baker Mayfield, taking Mike Evans from a consistently really good wide receiver to one of the best years he's had, um, turning Rashad White into, into kind of a fantasy stud and on down the list. And so I just want to keep an open mind specifically because if the market, it, I imagine the market is going to agree with my sentiment about Bryce Young and the Carolina Panthers, as I think everybody should, because I don't think, I don't think Bryce is any good. <clears throat> and Deontay Johnson isn't like changing the world here. But if we just start to see, hmm, okay, big coaching upgrade. We let's improve the offensive line, like right. Let's see. Let's see if they improve the offensive line. We bring in Deontay. Maybe we bring in another weapon. You know, they could use a tight end that can catch passes better than Hayden Hurst, right? And if these things start just kind of adding up, and the market decides, no, I still don't want him. I still don't want uh, not necessarily Bryce, but the Panthers, right? It, it could be one of those. Uh, this is another Dave Canales. Um, you know, resurrection job. I don't know, but it's, I'm just going to kind of, that, that's what was hitting me when, when Deontay signed. Nothing super special or crazy about Deontay, but I think he's, he's very, he can be very helpful. There's just a bunch of weird stuff going on around my house. It feels like I'm in a haunted house or something. Um, but I think he can be helpful for, this situation turning from a total dumpster fire to like maybe something that there could be some juice to squeeze out of. I did not think that really there was any juice to squeeze out of this at all before. All right. I am in this draft. We are live. I had the 104 and I took Tyreek Hill. It went pretty standard. CD Chase, Tyreek Hill, Justin Jefferson. I am going, you know what? We're going to, we're going to have some fun. We're pulling, we're pulling, yeah, yeah, this is a good, good point. We're getting a crossover show of uh, Rob's other show, Hometown Ghost Stories. If you're into ghosts and horror and all that kind of stuff, go check out Hometown Ghost Stories on, on YouTube. Uh, I reached for old Drake London in the second round. Uh, definitely a reach, but I am personally trying to up my Blake, my Blake. Drake London exposure. And the more, speaking of the free agency stuff, obviously, uh, unless you've been living under a rock, you noticed that Kirk Cousins has signed with the Atlanta Falcons. And I just, I don't know, man. I just get more excited the more I think about the Atlanta Falcons with Kirk Cousins. Um, <laughs> shout, shout out D Ross with a Falcons avatar, says Attaboy. And uh, Shuby says third round pits now get that stack not quite gonna take old third round Kyle Pitts but obviously you guys know me and of course if I took Drake London I'll be interested in Kyle Pitts but gosh man I this just feels like one of those situations where you know like where there's smoke there's fire like I believe in like the kind of common sense types of things and it's like we've been telling ourselves um, we're back on the clock Saquon available is interesting. You know, that's not my kind of a thing. Saquon, Mike Evans, Debo Samuel, Michael Pittman. I'm actually going to take me a little Michael Pittman here. Um, we'll talk about that one in a second. Uh, the Falcon with Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta, it just feels like we've been ranting and we've been raving and we've been talking about Arthur Smith and we've been talking about Marcus Mariota and we've been talking about Desmond Ritter and, you know, just trust me, Drake London is good. Just trust me. Kyle Pitts is good. And they've earned like volume as if they are good. It's a fact. And I think most people would agree that you know, most people, they're being honest would agree that they're pretty sure that Drake London and Kyle Pitts and certainly B. John Robinson are good at football. All uh, our, our two, we had two complaints. And even with these two complaints, we were drafting Drake London in like the fourth round last year. We we're drafting Kyle Pitts in like the whatever sixth round last year. Before we were drafting Kyle Pitts at the two, three turn. Two years ago, we were drafting Kyle Pitts at the two, three turn and Drake London in like the fifth round. 
with these complaints that uh, this fucking Arthur Smith, this goddamn Arthur Smith, he doesn't get the ball. He runs the ball too much and he doesn't get the ball to his best players. But I'm just going to bet on the talent. I'm just going to bet on it. Desmond Ritter, awful. Marcus Mariota, awful. Terrible quarterbacks. But I'm still, I, I believe. I believe in the talent. Just bet on the talent of Drake London and Kyle Pitts. And it didn't really come through, of course. It didn't really come through. Yeah, it, the uh, Michael Pittman thing, I just got the notification. We'll get to it in a second, Hoosier. Because uh, I think it's it's funny. We've been just preaching about this Kirk cut, like this, not this Kirk Cousins, about this quarterback and this coach situation for these guys. That they're superstars. They're superstars. We just need to get these roadblocks out of the way. And then not only does Arthur Smith get fired, not only do they bring in uh, someone from uh, the Rams tree, the McVeigh tree, that is exactly what we want, right? That's the tree. Like that's that's what the, the Shanahan and McVeigh trees is like if we can pluck somebody in from there, that's what we want with our coaches. Then we get maybe the single best case scenario unless like there was some trade that we could just, you know, couldn't possibly foresee coming. We get the best case scenario quarterback dropped into this, dropped into this situation in Kirk cousins. Now the Achilles thing would be the only reason that it's not the best case scenario. But if we, if we just assume that he'll be healthy, right? A lot of these like Aaron Rodgers, say whatever you want about Aaron Rodgers, And I don't want to talk about the latest uh, Tom foolery from, from that fella, but you know, I think a pocket passing stationary quarterback, I trust that he'll be, you know, he'll be fine. I, it, I could end up being totally wrong about that. And I'm willing to admit that. But as of right now, my assumption is just that he'll be okay. Uh, we'll be fine with Kirk Cousins this com- this coming season for the Falcons. And so like that guy has made fantasy stars out of a lot of dudes. Like if you are one of the top targets on his team and sometimes not even one of the top, right? Remember a couple, was it two years ago? KJ Osborne like broke the best ball playoffs. KJ Osborne broke the best ball playoffs playing with Kirk Cousins. Everybody who has caught now, granted, he's had some good receivers, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen, Steph Diggs, and such. But like if you catch passes from him, you you crush for fantasy. You crush. And now we drop that dude in there into this situation that we've been dreaming about with the new head coach. And I'm just like, I can't help myself. I can't, I can't help myself. Um, all right. Back on the clock, Amari Cooper, Lamar Jackson, Zay flowers. Oh, I got to get my, I got to get my Terry McLaurin up here. Another guy. Uh, yes. As B curse says two years ago, Minnesota in week 15. Yeah. The big, big comeback. KJ Osborne scored like almost 40 fantasy points, half PPR fantasy points. He's just, He's just a uh, Kirk Cousins is the exact kind of he's Jason Kidd, dude. He's not the perfect player. He's not the perfect quarterback, but he is a point guard that is going to do the things to get his other fantasy assets there. They're going to eat. The players around him are going to eat. And like, I just can't think of a better situation, right? Other than Mahomes and, and that kind of stuff, Burrow, whatever. But like outside of that, those actually the truly unrealistic options, like, I, I'm going to load up on the Falcons. I am. Um, other news that just happened. While we're on a free agency show. Uh, quickly, I am back on the clock. Started Tyreek Hill, Drake London, Michael Pittman, Terry McLaurin. Let's do... I haven't really been taking George Pickens and we'll... Uh, Willie. <laughs> the chat is having some fun with Anthony Richardson. But... I drafted Michael Pittman in the third round, and uh, it's nice to be on the clock. Usually people do this for slow drafts, but it's nice to be on the clock and get the news that Joe Flacco signs with the Indianapolis Colts. Joe Flacco has uh, officially signed with the Indianapolis Colts. Anthony Richardson is a starting quarterback there. There's no concerns about that. I've seen some concern about uh, Richardson at quarterback for Michael Pittman. I would um, request that you go look at weeks one and week then week two for Michael Pittman with Anthony Richardson to see, like, dude, Anthony Richardson is not 
Tim Tebow. Like, I think sometimes we like treat r- guys who are not the world's best passers and are good runners. Like they can't complete a forward pass. And like, he's not an awesome passer, but like Michael Pittman was awesome with Anthony Richardson in weeks one and weeks two and got weeks one and two and got absurd volume, <laughs> like mega volume. So like, I think we, we get very overconfident in those kinds of things. And it always happens with rushing quarterbacks. If you recall last year, we were not allowed to draft DJ Moore because Justin Fields, you know, is not a good enough passer. He scrambles too much and the bears are going to run too much. So this, this, and that was wrong. Now look, DJ Moore is a second round pick and was an elite, elite fantasy wide receiver last year. Michael Pittman is a stud. I understand he needs to get there by volume. He's good at the game. I just am going to draft dudes who are good at the game, especially full point PPR. And what if Richardson gets better? Like have we ever considered that he was really just in like his second year, full year starting. And he obviously didn't get a full year in last year. Like what if Richardson just becomes a good passer? Lamar was not a good passer when he first started in the NFL. Now he's a two time MVP and a very good passer. Right, Josh Allen was not a good passer when he got to the NFL. Sometimes these guys get better. Typically you do. When you're 22 years old, you're probably going to be better when you're 24 than when you're 22. And so um, I'm not worried about Michael Pittman. Like I said, good at the game. But the, we get, I get, I'm on the clock on the show, and you get the Joe Flacco signs with the Colts thing. And it's also going to lead me into uh, some Raiders free agency takes because I want to talk about that from a free agency perspective as well. When we, <clears throat> There's something to be said for a floor at quarterback. And Joe Flacco signing with the Colts, like I was like, I don't have a lot of Pittman. I get the news of Joe Flacco to the Colts. I'm like, I'm thinking about like, this this conversation that we'll get to with Gardner Minshew, who also ironically was on the Colts last year, where having a quality, proven commodity backup for your fantasy wide receivers is like kind of an underrated thing now, I think. Um, ooh, ooh, Aaron Jones. No, 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 no. Pitts is gone, of course. So we'll take Bowers since Pitts is gone. Uh, having Having a floor at quarterback that like, okay, Anthony Richardson is worst case scenario. Cause it can always get like you, you want to say like, Oh, you know, it's a bad situation. It can always get worse. Burrow goes down. Look at the jets last year. Jets had Aaron Rodgers. We were all excited for the jets. Garrett Wilson going at the one, two turn ish or whatever. All excited. And going back there again, Brees Hall's first round. The two jets are first round picks. And I agree with it, but when there's no float, right? One in all it takes is one injury and your whole it's over. Your whole season is over having a floor at the quarterback position. I think it's like kind of a little bit of a sneaky underrated thing. It's not a big deal. We can't predict the injuries. I'm not worried about it, but I think like <clears throat> little tiebreakers and different things like that. Like I would also like for Pittman, I'm not like mega jazz for Pittman. I think he's fine. I don't, but I like I I could have I could have sold myself on like a full Pittman fade probably. But once you bring in that, once you once you bring in that stabilizer of Joe Flacco behind him, it's behind Anthony Richardson. It's like there's basically no way that this ever goes completely terribly. You know what I mean? It's not possible for this to go truly horrendously bad. I'm gonna take David and Joku here actually. One of my one of my favorite strats. Um, Johnny says, for anybody that has just now joined or has just joined recently, uh, I'm going to drop the link to the Google Sheet again. And uh, somebody remind me to do it again later. Johnny, I just posted it. There's a Google Doc in the chat. Pop your name in that. You'll see the other folks that put their names in there. Uh, username, name. Johnny Burnett, whatever you want to put it on there. Uh, and then you will be entered and I'll spin the wheel at the end. Uh, but so Joe Flacco, right to the, to the Colts. This, it, this is like a, t- you want to talk about sicko level fantasy football type stuff, but I, what it really um, 
this I started to feel this with Gardner Minshew, and we've talked a lot about this actually in again in the Discord. There's a link to the Discord in the description where Gardner Minshew signs with the Raiders <clears throat> and provides this level of floor of quarterback play that like dude if they went into this if they got right there there's musical chairs at the quarterback position going on right now in the nfl and let's just say you know justin field stays in chicago or ends up a backup somewhere if the raiders got locked out of all the free agent quarterbacks you know jacoby even jacoby brissett has gone and they got locked out of the rookies you'd be heading in with the floor of aiden o'connell and like somebody worse than Aiden O'Connell, the floor for Devontae Adams, Jacoby Myers, Michael Mayer, all of those guys, the floor is like, wow, like really bad. And the the ceiling may not be that good either because Aiden O'Connell isn't very good. You, you add in Gardner Minshew to this situation and it provides a level of floors. Like, all right, we saw Aiden O'Connell last year. It wasn't very good. But that's worst case scenario. It, it, Gardner Minshew provides this much higher floor now. Now, and still, it's not impossible that they acquire, say, a Justin Fields. Then it would be like, all right, this is either Fields or Minshew. It's all good. That was the Colts last year. Now it is the Colts again this year where Anthony Richardson and worst case scenario, it's Joe Flacco. Those are like, tiny little micro edges, you know, micro things that we should worry about. But I just happen to be thinking about it a lot because I'm very high on the Raiders. I was higher on the Raiders before, but specifically now with Minshew in there, I'm very high on the Raiders because I think they have a bunch of talented players on their offense. I think it's a very condensed offense. The Colts are similar to this where now I can feel this comfort of quarterback play. It's like, is Gardner Minshew awesome? No, no. But he's like a dollar store Kirk Cousins, right? He's going to go out there. He's going to point guard it up, check it down a bunch, you know, just get the – you think he doesn't know? Like, hmm, he was the guy slinging it to Pittman all the time. I'm just I'm just going to throw it to Devontae and throw it to Jacoby and throw it to Michael Mayer and, like, let them make me look good. Like, don't screw this up is, is, is what he's doing. And that just provides such a high floor that um, – I'm pretty excited. I am specifically excited about the Raiders, though. Uh, I, I'm I'm getting pretty hyped uh, for the Raiders. Mark doesn't seem to love the Raiders quite like I love the Raiders. All right, back on the clock. We've got two tight ends and four wide receivers. Let's take a look at quarterback really quick. Woof, not good. Uh, wide receiver. Wow, man, the Lab McConkey. I mean, I like Lab McConkey, but I think I might be taking Lab McConkey. Jesus Christ, guys. I do think um, if you saw Lad, uh, Lad did some kind of testing today at the Georgia Pro Day, and he's just, he's good. Lad's a good football player, and he's a real good, he's a real good athlete. So uh, I believe it was Hayden Winks. Shout out Hayden Winks from Underdog. Said uh, he called Lad a top 40 pick. Thank you. Yeah, the three cone. Uh, was Lad's. Uh, Lad was exceptional in the three cone. And Shuby, shout out Shuby, he has a 9.2 RAS score, which is like, can you imagine uh, if if you had to predict without knowing anything about someone and his name was Lad McConkey, he's a former walk on in the SEC, and you had to guess over or under a RAS score, what would it be? Because nine point two would be so much of would be like <laughs> like you hit the over in the first half of the game type of a situation, uh, you know, Lad McConkey having a nine point yeah two point nine your my guess would be two point nine not not nine point two a two point nine Raz for someone named Lad McConkey but the kid's got juice he also sneakily. I'm not going to pull it up right now, pull up a boring spreadsheet to show everybody, but sneakily yards per route run targets per route run for old lad. Ooh. Elite elite. Uh, all right. Back on the clock. We are in a very gross zone. 
you know, so I've been taking a, a good clip of Brian Robinson here. I do, I do still really like Brian Robinson, even though they signed Austin Eckler. We could talk a little bit about that in a second, but I, I want to get, uh, tr- I'm going to take Trey Benson for a first running back here. I'm, I'm very triggered. Shuby does this to me all the time. Shuby drafting out of the, the third spot here takes Zamir White. That's who I really wanted. So I could wax poetic some more about the Las Vegas uh, Raiders. Yeah. Paulino says some people were comparing him to Hunter Renfro. That's because some people can't can't compare a white wide receiver to someone that's not a white slot wide receiver. If you're a white wide receiver coming out of college, you are Julian Edelman, Wes Welker, or Hunter Renfro. God forbid we are able to compare players to other races or, you know, whatever. Like it's, it's truly absurd. He's, he could not possibly be any different than Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro is slow. He, he developed a pretty cool little route running thing there that he did for the Raiders that, that finer, that final year, but like he's slow. He didn't produce for shit at, at Clemson. Like it's such a horrible comp that uh, it's so funny when people do that. Uh, have you ever watched uh, the movie Role Models? This is a hundred percent. Like every single time I think about when people comp the white wide receiver, especially when it is like a slot wide receiver, when people comp the white wide receiver to Julian Edelman or Wes Welker or Hunter Renfro. If you've seen the movie Role Models, the little kid he has a uh, he calls. Um, I don't remember if he call, he calls Paul Rudd. Calls Paul Rudd. I think I think it's either Paul Rudd or um, oh my God, Sean William Scott he says he calls him Ben Affleck. And he makes fun of him and calls him Ben Affleck. He says, "What do you mean? Why am I Ben Affleck?" He says, "You white, you Ben Affleck." And that's all I can ever think about when people do the the white player to the white slot receiver. Like you can also get the uh, you know their first game or like maybe like week six. They've had a couple of good. They've had a couple of good games. And then they're on Sunday night football and you get ready. Maybe not, maybe not Sunday night football, Thursday night football. They're on Thursday night football. You get ready for the analysis of Lab McConkie, right? Lab McConkie's had two good games. It's week six. They're playing on Thursday night football. You're going to get the shows up early, leaves late, brings his lunch pail, hard worker, right? Never gym rat, you know, always in the always uh, nose in the playbook like you're going to get all that bullshit and it's like like guys <laughs> like come on <laughs> like come on yeah cra- he's crafty like it's so ridiculous <laughs> it's so <laughs> ridiculous and this goes both ways too i'm just not going to touch on the uh, much more inappropriate side of uh, of all this you know lamar and fields and uh, and stuff and stuff um yeah anyway i don't even know what we were talking about but uh i don't remember oh uh i was gonna talk about uh uh jerry judy with david and joku i think i think i've seen david and joku um fall a tick Not, nothing crazy we do get like random risers and fallers during during free agency with jerry judy going to to cleveland if it's going to force david and joku to fall at all yeah, you can sign me up for that. I I, I am all good uh, with Jerry Judy. I'm not worried about what he does to David and Joku personally. He buries Elijah Moore. Is what, is what Jerry Judy does. Ooh, okay, back on the clock. <laughs> this is a humorous top of the running back uh, charts here. I am going to queue up Jonathan Brooks and take a look-see. Take a peek see at the quarterbacks. Our quarterbacks are still good. There is the aforementioned Jerry Judy. I'm definitely going to take Jonathan Brooks here. I love getting the rookies at a not a, not a discount, but I love getting the rookies <clears throat> on. I'm clearly drafting as your running back team. I love it. <laughs> Sags, I see your comment. And I don't know if you know about my obsession with Moneyball, but we'll get to that. Uh, also should be take Zach Moss. Like this is, I'm going to keep it together and ignore all the snipes, uh, because they're not actually snipes. Like you're allowed to pick, you're allowed to pick whoever you want. You know what I mean? But, uh, it's, it certainly has not been a lot of fun so far. 
And now I'm going to take Corum. Let's just all rookie running back this thing. But I do like the rookies. I do like the rookie running backs uh, on zero running back teams. And especially right now, I'm pretty into the rookie running backs where the that tier or that cohort, I guess, is a, a better phrase. The cohort of the veteran running backs that have all just now signed in free agency are like right at the beginning, like when this contest opened, the, the guys who got steamed up the most right away were the rookies. We're all excited for the rookies. There's all these guys that are free agents. They're older. We don't know where they're going to be. We don't know. We don't know like where they're going to go to screw somebody else up, right? Like DeAndre Swift was a free agent. He screwed up my Khalil Herbert teams, but it kept the cost in check for Zamir White, for Khalil Herbert, for Ty Chandler. And you know that some of them are just going to get bombed, right? Aaron Jones, see you, Ty Chandler, you know. Uh, uh, DeAndre Swift, whoops, okay, sorry, Roshan, but some of them are going to hit, like Zamir White, right? We're still holding on. He's he's going to get some competition. Zamir White's not going to go in with nobody behind him on the depth chart. They're going to sign someone, but the longer this goes on, the better and better it gets for his potential outlook. But the rookies now, we've done this funny roller coaster where the rookies were the you know rocket ship in ADP for the first month of this contest. And then, and then free agency happens and it's like, no, fuck those rookies, you know, fuck them kids. It's fuck those rookies and give me Derrick Henry and Austin Eckler and Tony Pollard, right? And Joe Mixon and all that stuff. Give me those guys. And I like, you know, I like, like I'm, I'm, uh, there's a guy who, uh, let me see if he, he just went off the board. I was just about to say, uh, Devin Singletary over here just went 111 overall. I'm hyped. For Devin Singletary, I think if you have Devin Singletary shares, this work, this this free agency period worked out really well for you. But it's like even I like we're hyped for Devin Singletary, and it's like yeah, but like we still probably like the rookies. Like we still like the rookies, but they're like stagnated or even falling in ADP. So I really like uh, I, I really like this time period attacking those guys. Um, oh, but Sags, Sags, that Sags. I don't know if you know this. Um, a, I'm obsessed with the, the book and the movie Moneyball. It legitimately has like sort of changed my life. Uh, I love that approach. I mean, it changed sports, so it changed a lot of people's lives. But <clears throat> the way I the way I think about sports and stuff, I would say not just specifically Moneyball, but a lot of the concepts that are similar to to Moneyball are how I think about a lot of things. But uh, I recently wrote. Uh, I believe what I called it is the money ball approach to best ball or fantasy football or something. If you haven't checked it out, go to spikeweek.com or just search money ball approach to best ball or something like that. It'll come up. Uh, uh, and I literally wrote a like money ball and, and specifically that scene is where the scouts are all sitting at the table and uh, there's Jonah Hill over here and Ben, uh, uh, uh Brad Pitt a.k.a. Billy Bean, is sitting there. He says, you know, I don't care about any of these guys. All we care about, if he gets on base. And that getting, like, gets on base, or he gets on base, or have whatever phrase you would like to use, is, like, you're going to hear me say it a lot over the course of this summer. So, yes, I agree. I totally agree with you. Oh, Nick Chubb plummeting, Justin Fields plummeting, Jahan Dotson. I do need some quarterbacks, huh? Uh, we're going to take Drake May. Let's see. Oh, my gosh. This was epic. Shuby says, uh, did you hear Leggett talking at his pro day? That man has top 24 wide receiver accent. No shot. The big, strong dude with a country accent is busting. Yeah. So if you haven't uh, heard this, you got to go go to Twitter and search like Xavier Leggett accent or Xavier Leggett voice or something like that. He has I, he, we moved. I'm moving him up to this point. You got to move this guy up in the ranks. This dude has one of the coolest southern accents, especially for like an athlete, celebrity, whatever. I'm not sure he was meant to play. Well, 
athletically he was meant to play football. That voice was meant to be like a famous actor or country singer, or he's meant to be famous. Let's just say that much. He's meant to be famous. Uh, the accent is the stuff of legends. It's unreal. It's like truly unreal. Oof. This draft is, this is not my favorite draft, you guys. I'm, I'm just, I'm just going to be straight up honest with you. I have had more fun in other drafts than this one. Let's see. We got, I'm going to take me a little Wandale here. Gonna take a little Wandale. This is great. Al says, I took my first share of Leggett today after seeing that on the Swole cast. Yeah, I'm, I mean, how can you not, how can you not be excited for that? Legitimately amazing. One of the coolest things I've heard in some time. Um, let's take a look, see here. Oof. Yeah, it's getting bad. This this draft is getting tough. <clears throat> it's getting tough. Let's run it back really quick and take a look. All right. Started out of the 104. Tyree Kill, Drake London, Michael Pittman, Terry McLaurin, George Pickens. I didn't get a chance to talk about George Pickens. Perfect time to talk about George Pickens. So I'm going to move George Pickens up in my rankings. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to take some more George Pickens. Uh, so a couple things. I think that uh, down the stretch, uh, irregardless of uh, regardless of <clears throat> the Steelers situation, Arthur Smith, Russell Wilson, regardless of all that stuff, George Pickens' kind of ascent down the down the stretch of the season is one of those where you don't want to fixate too much on a small sample, but also for a young player who we've kind of believed in as a talent, or at least <clears throat> as a, like an upside play to start to see more real target earning. Like the, what he did in, I'm going to week 16 and 17, but like down the stretch, he had the one monster game right on Saturday on uh, Saturday night football uh, around. What was that? Christmas Eve or day before Christmas, Christmas Eve, Eve, something like that. Anyway, what he did down the stretch is, 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 is something I think it's important to take note of because it wasn't just like, oh, you know, shout out Gabe Davis. It wasn't just like, oh, Gabe caught four touchdowns in, in the one game. Pickens started to be utilized a lot more like a go-to wide receiver. I actually learned a lot more from the Seattle game. Now I was very intently watching that because I had a, I had DK Metcalf, Jackson Smith, and Jigba, uh, Jalen Warren, and and Pickens on on my best ball mania team that was doing pretty well. Uh, finals team, so I was watching the Seattle and Pittsburgh game pretty closely. But what Pickens what Pickens was doing, uh, all right. I am back on the clock, and I know this is about to be a hell of reach, but if I don't get Will Levis on this team, I'm going to cry. Because uh, as Shuby said here, this was a tough room to punt QB. And I wasn't even planning on punting QB. I was planning on, like, I don't know, this looks like a Caleb Williams team to me. And that didn't work. Okay, it's not Caleb Williams. Maybe it's Jaden Daniels. Nope. So Drake May it is. Uh, but what, what I really... When when go back and watch when if you ever get a chance or you just like to nerd out on uh, some football games like I do go back and watch what uh, Pickens did and specifically how the Steelers used him and now I know it's Arthur Smith now right so we'll get to that how they used him <clears throat> in that game as like I'll never forget the final play where it's third down they need it might not have even been third down. But if they get a first down, the game's over. And the Steelers, 99 times out of 100, you would guess that they would run it, right? Run it, run the clock out, let's move on type of a thing. God damn it. 
this draft room is absolutely painful, guys. Like truly, truly painful. All right. Well, if we're going to, uh, no, 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 no. I don't like Bucky. I don't really like Estime. I'll take a Gibson share, I guess. We'll talk about him in a second, too. You know, second and 10, <clears throat> Steelers would just run the ball, run the clock out, let the Seahawks use their timeouts. They throw it, and they throw a slant in one-on-one -on -one coverage to Pickens. He catches it, picks up the first down. Uh, should have scored, actually. The fucker, I wished he would have, wish he would have scored. That would have won me about 250K. But the little things about, like, when we need something, we go to this guy type of a thing that's really little and i'm not trying to draw too too much from it but we saw like kind of a shift to that down the stretch where he really did become a little bit more of the focal point of the offense and then and then you know of course they they change offensive coordinators but then they say whatever we want about russell wilson he's an upgrade over kenny pickett and mason rudolph and then they trade deontay johnson which like just sort of signals to me that they're like pickens is the dude Pickens is the dude. And we know he has the single week upside, right? That has ne really never been in question. But I think he might have some of that volume upside that we were hoping for. Now, <clears throat> you're concerned about Arthur Smith. You're probably concerned about Russell Wilson. Aren't we all? I just took Michael Pittman in the third round, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Not every situation is going to be perfect. But I think Arthur Smith has, like, we do this. We do this every year. I just talked about this with the Justin Fields and DJ Moore situation last year. We latch so hard onto the most recent results. Like, I'm very concerned about Arthur Smith, but we have four years of him calling plays. Two of them, he turned Ryan Tannehill and a Titans offense into a juggernaut. He turned, remember this, he turned the Tennessee Titans into an elite what did they win like 13 games or something like that the one year they got the one seed in the AFC in large part due to their offense he he turned Ryan Tannehill into a pro bowler okay we saw what Ryan Tannehill was and like it's funny because he everybody's oh now Tannehill's dust nobody gives any credit to Arthur Smith for any of that it was bad in Atlanta but like two years ago they nearly made the playoffs with Marcus Mariota and then Desmond Ritter. Marcus Mariota quit on the was so bad, then quit on the team. They went to Desmond Ritter, who we know stinks, and they still almost made the playoffs. With this was before Bijan. This is running the ball with CPAT and Tyler Algier. This past year it was bad, and I think he's a donkey and an asshole. But I, I feel like we have latched so hard onto the most recent results just like we did with the Chicago Bears where we said they're the run heaviest team of all time we can't draft any of the receivers and it's like that happened that doesn't mean that's what's going to happen next year I think you take Arthur Smith out of that whole situation you put him underneath Mike Tomlin I, I think we might see a you know a totally I think he can be a fine offensive coordinator he's got to prove it but I think he can be a fine offensive coordinator and I'm not saying George Pickens is A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown was quite good. A.J., right? Remember the, you know, we have this narrative of he doesn't get the ball to his best players, and he definitely did it in Atlanta. And no one is debating that. He sure as shit did in Tennessee. All they did was give it to Derrick Henry and A.J. Brown. And John knew at the time that they didn't throw it to anybody else. And, and But that, we just, no, that doesn't matter. Arthur's a donkey. Nothing else matters. And so... I, all of that 10 minute tangent is to say uh, I'm definitely uh, buying some George Pickens and probably some Steelers uh, last two picks Antonio Gibson and Kenny Gainwell two guys who I think uh, have benefited in very different ways from free agency Antonio Gibson it's like whatever but I think it it does firmly put him in like handcuff territory. I actually think Antonio Gibson signing with the Patriots. We talked about this on Monday. Go back and watch the Monday show. We talked about a lot of different free agents. So if I don't cover it, I'm not covering everything today because we covered a lot of it on Monday. So go back and check out that episode. Or uh, there's also a link to the podcast feed if you prefer the podcast version uh, in the description. 
But I think Antonio Gibson largely solidifies Ramondre, gets me pretty hyped for Ramondre because I don't think Gibson's – like this idea that Gibson is going to steal the passing work is nonsense. He never stole the passing work from Brian Robinson. Like he, he's not a, He can't pass protect. He's a good receiver. He can't pass protect. Ramondre is also a good receiver. Ramondre is like a really good receiver. He's good in the pass game. I, I, I'm not worried about – I'm very much so not worried about Ramondre. Uh, with Antonio Gibson, but this does put him like in a, you know, potentially advantageous situation, just because you don't have a week one role. doesn't mean you're not like, you haven't gotten a value bump. Um, how much should we, you know, value bump Gibson? I don't know, but I, I'm comfortable drafting him basically, particularly on zero running back teams. I'm comfortable drafting him. Who knows? Maybe it's a, you know, a, uh, uh, Post type sleeper type of situation. We were once upon a time drafting Antonio Gibson in the second round. He's plummeted all the way down to the <laughs> bottom few rounds and he's gone onto a new team. Maybe now's the shot. Uh, but took Antonio Gibson, took Kenny Gainwell, who we also talked about uh, on Monday, but Swift gone. The Eagles obviously bring in Saquon Barkley, but Gainwell's the only other back there behind. I, I, I think they probably, you know, are, they're going to load Saquon up with volume, but I think they're pretty comfortable with Kenny Gainwell's the backup in the. Eagles backup running back is a good thing. Like that's a, we want that on our fantasy teams. Uh, I think they trust Kenny Gainwell, and so whether we're excited about him, whether he has a week one role, I think is irrelevant. I think these are the kind of contingent value players we want. And then I took another contingent value player who talk about a roller coaster. Uh, Emmanuel Wilson. Currently, the number two running back behind Josh Jacobs was previously the number two running back behind Aaron Jones. And for a very, 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 very short moment in time, we thought, oh, no, oh, no, it's over for Emmanuel Wilson. And then they cut Aaron Jones. So we have a right. And, and these are and New England is a somewhat high value backfield. We'll kind of see without Mac Jones and Bailey. We'll see. We'll see what happens without Belichick and everything. Uh, but it's actually been a, a fairly high value backfield for from a fantasy perspective the eagles we know is a really high value backfield from a fantasy perspective and green bay is an awesome backfield from a fantasy perspective getting the contingent value bets in those offenses is a is a really powerful thing to have in fantasy <laughs> yeah i agree we're, we're not we're never wishing for anybody to get hurt but would i be surprised D Ross says Kirk talking about going out and recruiting Mooney during his press conference. That's interesting. I'm down to, uh, man, I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to go crazy, but, uh, I'm down to sprinkle a little bit of Darnell Mooney. See what I really want to take though. is my boy, Yoshi, another player who's gotten a nice little boost from free agency, but not from free agency, but just from T Higgins, Requesting a trade. We'll see if T actually gets traded, but I'm down to take it. Let's see. Mark, shout out Mark. Mark says, do you think Green Bay drafts a running back? Yeah, probably late though. He drafts a running, right. Drafts a sixth rounder, fifth rounder, whatever. Some undrafted guy like Emmanuel Wilson. <laughs> They'll, they're going to add something to the running back mix. But I personally believe that they like Emmanuel Wilson. I, I think part of this was an Emmanuel Wilson thing. I, call me crazy. I think part of the moving on from Aaron Jones was, A, they're getting um, Josh Jacobs. But, B, they have another, right? No A.J. Dillon. No uh, – I'm going, I'm going right back to my guy here, uh, Evan Hall. But correlating with, with a little Michael Pittman action. Uh, playing the hits drafted a bunch of these guys the other night. I, I think, I think green Bay is a really smart organization. I don't know that I would have done the Josh Jacobs thing, but I don't think that they would spend on Josh Jacobs and spend then a pretty high value asset on another running back. I could be wrong, but that's my general take. Like, I don't know why you would cut Aaron Jones and then sign Josh Jacobs if you were the type of team 
that would want to spend big assets on another running back. It's like, you, it just feels, that feels weird. You know what I mean? Like that doesn't add, the logic on that doesn't add up. Like we want, we don't want to pay Aaron Jones, even though he's really good. We know he's really good. Then we, so we let him go. We pay another running back. We're going to then, you know, spend a third rounder, which is a really valuable asset. We're going to spend a third rounder on another running back when we got him. You know, it's, anything is possible, but that's just like I, I said earlier about the the smell test, the common sense test. That one doesn't pass it for me. So I'm going to be loading up. I'm loading up on some Emmanuel Wilson. Uh, as the draft is winding down, one final shot. I just posted the Google Sheet to the YouTube chat one final time. So if you've just recently joined us, there's a link to a Google Doc now in the YouTube chat. Go in there. You will see in column A, the folks have posted their names, usernames, what have you, into that column. If you put your name in there, you will be entered to win a drafter's NFL Best Ball Championship ticket when it launches around the NFL draft. Uh, I assure you, you will not be disappointed with this contest this summer. I can't give away all the deets. But I've spoken with the good folks at Drafters, and I assure you, you're going to love it. So uh, final final call to put your name in there. We will spin the wheel the moment the clock hits zero on the final pick of this draft. But uh, some folks might say, I just, just really wanted to quickly touch on, I took two elite tight ends. That's one of my fave strategies. I've talked quite a bit about that. I don't want to reiterate that. Obviously, drafting a zero running back team, mixing through, right? So I took three rookies. I, I'm hoping to hit the lotto on Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, Blake Corum, like getting into good landing spots that are doing something like pretty much right away, right? Then I took these contingent value bets, Antonio Gibson, Kenny Gainwell, Emmanuel Wilson, Evan Hall. Probably going to take another one here. I'm going to turn this into a 2 8 8 2 team. Eight wide receivers. My wide receivers are quite strong, in my opinion. Tyree Kill, Drake London, Michael Pittman, Terry McLaurin, George Pickens, Lad McConkey, Wandale Robinson, and Andre Yoshivas with Brock Bowers and David Njoku. The weak part of this team, naturally, Drake May and Will Levis, the only two quarterbacks. That's something we've discussed a lot about as well. I understand that a lot of people may take this and turn it into a... Uh, like I like Gardner Minshew on this team. I want to I want to put that out there. But for me, I am personally trying to invest more assets into the running back and wide receiver positions to uh, win the flex, if you will. And I'm going to take my guy, one of my flavors that I take all the time, too much, Ronnie Rivers, another contingent value bet in a high value touch offense. Is it possible that Ronnie Rivers gets replaced? Of course, it's possible that any of these guys get replaced. The Rams don't have a ton of assets. The Rams don't have a ton of assets. They don't generally, you know, I know they did the Cam Akers thing, but they don't generally like spend a ton on the running back position. Kyron is the man. They got holes to fill. They just beefed up the offensive line. And last year, Ronnie Rivers was the handcuff to Kyron Williams. He got hurt himself. Unfortunately, when Kyron missed time, Ronnie Rivers was also hurt. But as soon as Ronnie Rivers came back, he took over the handcuff job. He is an exclusive rights free agent. He's going to be back with the Rams because exclusive rights free agents, if you're worth anything uh, on the field, you're so free, to, you're so cheap to bring back. That's what teams do. And so this is, you'll see a trend on a lot of my teams. If, you, if you're with us for the first time, or if you've been with, been with me for a long time, you will see a trend of these are the types of backs that I really like to take. I love the rookies, of course, but contingent value bets, particularly contingent value bets like right now that other people don't like feel comfortable clicking because they're like, he could get replaced. It's like, I agree. He could get replaced. He's the last round pick and people are expecting him to get replaced. But what if he doesn't get replaced, you get Jerome Ford of last year. Like Jerome Ford was a big hit in this early tournament, right? Kyron Williams, if you were to have the foresight to realize, which I was not, smart enough to realize Kyron Williams was Cam Akers backup. He actually ended up not being his backup. Right. But people were worried about, I don't know who it is. Who's it going to be in the backfield there? And if you take your shot and you hit, that's how you can absolutely hit big here. So you see closing it out with Antonio Gibson, Kenny Gainwell, Emmanuel Wilson, Evan Hall, and Ronnie rivers. And 
you have to sacrifice somewhere to to juice up your teams uh, and to get as many shots on goal at running back and wide receiver. I took two elite tight ends so that I only had to take two. Plus, I really like that strategy and I like the early tight ends. I took a bunch of stud wide receivers. That's me. That's what I do, as you guys probably know by now. So something's got to give. Do I really want to go in with only seven running backs? My first running back is drafted at pick 100. Not personally. No, not, not, not personally. I want to use those bullets at running back. And so this bet, right, this team needs Drake May and or Will Levis to be very good. I that's a is that a thin bet? Yeah, probably. Guess what? It's you're gonna take you're gonna need thin bets to hit to win this tournament. And I'm most comfortable making them at positions like quarterback, given the current uh, it, positions at quarterback in terms of only taking two of them. Like, because everyone else that I'm, we're drafting against is going to take three quarterbacks on this team. And so if I hit Drake May and Will Levis, I don't give a shit about that third quarterback. Am I likely to hit them? I don't know. Probably not. But when I do, this team is has that extra bullet to crush, to find the slam dunk home run hit at running back or wide receiver. So really quickly run this down. Then we're going to spin that wheel and give away that free ticket. Drake May and Will Levis at quarterback, Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks, Blake Corum, Antonio Gibson, Kenny Gainwell, Emmanuel Wilson, Evan Hall, and Ronnie Rivers at running back. <laughs> I do like just really quickly before I go to that. I like this logic from Hoosier. He says, if you're doubting a pick or a structure or whatever, just remember to tell yourself this team's probably going to lose anyway. It is. So if you just accept that this $10 or $11 or $20 is gone, the moment you clicked enter, you'll you'll play for keeps a little bit better. Wide receiver, Tyreek Hill, Drake London, Michael Pittman, Terry McLaurin, George Pickens, Lab McConkie, Juan Dale Robinson, and Andre Yoshivas. That's a, that is a pretty fun wide receiver room. And then rookie, Brock Bowers, and David and Joku paired at tight end. All right, that was a legitimately very fun draft. Uh, I appreciate you guys for hanging with me. Let me get the names loaded into the wheel. Into the wheel. And then we will spin this baby. We will give away the very, very, <laughs> this is great. Uh, the very first free ticket on our Wednesday night show here on Spike Week. Let's spin this wheel, huh? He wins it. David. David. I don't know if I'm David. Where's David? David, are you in the chat? Show yourself. If you are still, if you are not still in the chat, David, please contact me. Discord, Twitter. Um, yeah, Discord or Twitter. Really? Uh, <laughs> no, the wheel, just it's, uh, it's just Google it. Wheel of names. Uh, David Russell shouts to you. You have won the very first free ticket giveaway. Uh, next week, Jack. Jack says, for, forgot to uh, enter next week and every Wednesday thereafter. We got lots of free tickets to give away. This is not going to be the only one. But David Russell and everyone else, of course, Thank you for joining me, David. Hit me up in Discord. Discord's probably the best place, but in Twitter or whatever. Uh, and we'll get you all squared away. I'll put you, get your information to the folks over at Drafters. But we survived the storm stream. Uh, the dogs didn't go crazy. It's an absolute miracle. And now I'm going to leave here and go see how bad my St. Louis Billikens are losing in probably their last game of the season. But uh, we've got some videos coming up. We're, we're, we're working on a ton of strategy videos. And, of course, Rob will be back on Sunday morning for the Sicko Sundays live stream where he'll, be, of course, be back in drafting probably in the big board. I would assume Rob will be drafting in the big board. So catch Rob on Sunday. We'll be back next next week. Excuse me. And be on the lookout for some more videos because we got tons of best ball content coming uh, here at Spike Week. I'll see you guys next week. Peace. One. Oh, the 
those were some spicy takes. Want to stay up to date with all of the other spicy takes we're going to have over here at Spike Week? Why don't you press that subscribe button below? If you turn notifications on, we draft a team, boom, you know about it. We have another spicy take, boom, you know about it. You can be there. You can draft with us. You want to stay up to date? That's how you do it. All right, we'll catch you later next time here at Spike Week.